The Saboteur is a 2009 open-world action-adventure video game set during World War II in German-occupied France. It was published by Electronic Arts and was the final game developed by Pandemic Studios. The BlackBerry and iOS versions were developed and published by Hands on Mobile. Topic. Plot The game is set in 1940, and its protagonist, Sean Devlin, based on William Grover Williams, is a hard-drinking Irish racecar mechanic, a regular among the racing groups of Paris. He arrives in Saarbrücken, along with his mentor Vittori Marini, best friend Jules Rousseau and Jules' sister Véronique. Sean is set to race in the Grand Prix, and quickly meets up with his on-again, off-again girlfriend and fellow racer Skylar Street Claire. He starts a rivalry with Kurt Dierker, an infamous racer and champion of the Nazis. During the race, Dierker cheats by shooting out one of Sean's tires. For revenge, Sean and Jules plan on breaking into the Doppelzieg factory that Dierker works for to sabotage his car, despite Skyler warning them that Dierker is not what he seems. At the factory, Sean and Jules are captured and tortured by Dierker, who reveals himself to be an SS commandant for the Nazis and believes them to be British spies. Dierker tortures and murders Jules before Sean's eyes, before Sean manages to escape only to witness the Nazis laying waste to the town. Sean manages to rescue Vittori and Veronique before they escape into Paris. Sean tells Jules' family what happened to him, and promises to take revenge on Dierker. Months later, Sean is living in La Belle du Nuit, a brothel owned by Jules' family. Sean is approached by Luc Godin, a local writer and leader of the resistance against the Nazi occupation, and Veronique's lover. He talks Sean into joining the resistance, and Sean is tasked with dispatching Nazi operations and killing high-ranking officers. He also gets involved with other resistance leaders and members including Father Dennis, a defrocked Catholic priest, Duval Mingle, whose lover betrayed him to a high-ranking Nazi, and Margot Bonaire, who seeks to preserve French culture that the Nazis aim to destroy. Through his work, Sean builds a reputation as a member of the resistance, and eventually Nazi terror squads are set loose in Paris, led by Dierker, who was put in charge of security, hunting and killing members of the resistance. Sean meets up with Skylar again, who reveals herself to be a British spy, and she takes Sean to her superiors. They task him with a series of jobs, including stealing an unknown treasure from the Nazis. Sean and Skylar are soon tasked with rescuing a German scientist named Dr. Kessler. It's revealed that the Doppelseg factory is a front for an atomic weapons factory that they were forcing Kessler to create. After Kessler is rescued, he refuses to work with anyone unless his daughter Maria is saved as well. Sean soon rescues Maria from her captors and takes her to the resistance headquarters, which is attacked by the Nazis, forcing them to flee to the catacombs. During this raid, Veronique is captured and prepped for execution in Notre Dame, which prompts Sean to rescue her himself. Luke comes up with a plan to topple the Nazi leadership, who are set to host a race, by having a driver blow them up with a rigged car. While Sean successfully wins the race, and wipes out most of the leadership, Dierker survives and takes control of the remaining Nazis. In retaliation, the Nazis destroy La Belle du Nuit, killing Veronique's parents, as well as Vittori. Sean races to the catacombs, where the resistance is being attacked by the Nazis. While Sean is successful in fighting them off, the resistance leadership is killed, with Luke being trapped underneath boulders, forcing Veronique to kill him so he doesn't get taken alive. However, Dr. Kessler and Maria are captured once again. Sean, Veronique and Skylar team up to raid the Doppelseg factory and rescue the Kesslers. Once drive. Kessler is rescued, he and Sean go on to dismantle the weapons and set the factory to explode before they escape. With the factory destroyed and the Kesslers rescued, Sean and Veronique return to Paris, where the people have risen up against the Nazi power, and Veronique becomes the new leader of the resistance. Sean tracks down Dierker to the Eiffel Tower, where he is executing his men for failing him. Sean finally confronts Dierker at the top of the tower, where Sean can either shoot Dierker off the tower, or let Dierker jump off himself. With Dierker dead, Veronique asks Sean if it's all over, to which Sean replies he's just getting started. Gameplay The player can explore Nazi-occupied Paris, some of the French countryside and parts of Germany. 
Color is a key element in the gameplay. Areas which are heavily controlled by the Nazis are represented in black and white, with the exception of the characters' irises, city lights, blood and blue symbols of the French resistance, and various German symbols, which are bright red and complete with swastikas. In these areas, German soldiers are present in large numbers, making it far more likely that Sean will be detected in his rebellious activities. To inspire that district again, players must weaken the German forces occupying the area. In doing so, that district's citizens regain their hope, visually represented by the area becoming vibrant and full of color. Germans in these areas will not be completely evicted but Sean has a higher chance of escaping them since they will no longer be so ubiquitous, and will primarily be centered on military bases, barracks, checkpoints, HQs, and other strategically important sites. In addition, the French people will play an active role in the struggle for colored zones. For example, if Sean gets into a fight with German soldiers in a colored area, allies like the French Resistance, the Maquis, and even passing French civilians will intervene against the occupiers. Throughout the game, Sean can upgrade his abilities and arsenal via perks, such as improving accuracy with a sniper rifle, ammo count for all weapons, damage, and more. Perks are gained through actions, such as evading high-level alarms, sniping targets or demolishing a set number of German installations or vehicles with a certain requirement. The player also has the ability to scale buildings and run across rooftops, where sometimes British supply boxes can be found, or to reach a good sniper's view of the ground beneath. Garages are available to the player, which can save parked vehicles and repair damaged ones. The player can also engage in fist fights or use a more stealthy approach, such as sneaking around or using a Nazi's uniform as a disguise. Should the player die while free roaming, Sean will lose all of his weapons and grenades he had equipped prior to death. The player can buy weapons, ammunition, explosives, maps and other items from several black market merchants. Once Sean has purchased a weapon from the dealers, he can equip himself with that weapon at any time. Topic. The Midnight Show A code for a downloadable patch entitled, The Midnight Show, was free to those who purchased a new copy of the game for either the Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3. For the Windows version, the extra content was already included on the disc. The content was later released on Xbox Live Marketplace and on the PlayStation Network in the UK. The content is free of charge for people who did not have the code. The extra content provides the player with extra brothels and hiding spots. It also includes a minigame in which the player can earn in-game items such as a car not found during the main campaign. Most notably, however, installing the add-on automatically renders all brothel girls in the game topless, although nudity can still be toggled on and off. This caused some controversy at the time of the game's release. Topic. Development The game has been called the developer's swan song. Since Pandemic Studios was liquidated after its completion, areas that were cut from the game late in development include a giant Nazi missile silo built into the side of a mountain, called Valhall. Pandemic concept artist Jason Hazelroth spent three years designing the project. In further concept art, Hazelroth revealed an experimental Nazi jet called the XJ05, which functioned as a boss fight while it was still docked, and another smaller jet, the JX07, which could have been used by the player. After the game was released, customers reported that the game was unplayable with an ATI graphics card. Some game retailers, including Direct2 Drive, had placed a warning on their websites declaring problems with the game's compatibility. A workaround required the user to disable multi-core processing entirely, which would significantly decrease their computer's performance. Pandemic employees acknowledged the issue and released a beta patch on December 18, 2009. The patch stated that users with quad-core CPUs would possibly have severe streaming issues, which required restricting the game to a single core as a workaround. This was despite the game's recommended specifications listing a quad-core CPU. Reception The PC version of the Saboteur received generally favorable reviews, and the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 versions received average reviews, while the iOS version received 
generally unfavorable reviews. According to the review aggregation website Metacritic, IGN praised the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 versions for their sound, black and white visuals, and cheap thrills, while criticizing their unpolished gameplay and somewhat silly animation. Game trailers called the Xbox 360 version yet another open world destruction game of 2009. The game was praised for being fun, although the site criticized the choppy voice acting, varying graphical quality and the unpolished end product. X-Play praised the same console version's unique look and setting, and the variety of gameplay, but criticized its poorly executed story, enemy AI, and various glitches. The PlayStation 3 version was noted for its anti-aliasing technique on a console that has traditionally had difficulty with AA. Using one of the PS3's synergistic processing units to perform after image edge detection and blurring, under optimal conditions it manages equivalent to 16xAA. The game was frequently compared to Velvet Assassin, released the same year and featuring similar aesthetics and gameplay styles. The AV Club gave the PS3 version an A- and said, The nicest touch is that your free roaming sabotage has a direct effect on the quests that advance the main story. 411 Mania gave the Xbox 360 version a score of 7.5 out of 10 and said, If you're a fan of GTA or Mercs 1 or 2 you'll probably get some enjoyment out of the saboteur, but for everyone else this game is a rental at best. The Daily Telegraph gave the same console version 7 out of 10 and called it, a highly enjoyable game in its own right and it succeeds at being pure, rollicking entertainment. Players who are prepared to look past its derivative gameplay will find its silly characters and ridiculous plot and even some of its technical flaws may just be part of the reason they continue playing it long after the first couple of hours have passed by. Wired, however, gave the same console version 6 stars out of 10 and called it a big game best taken in small doses, an hour or two of clamber up the side of a building, snipe some guys, drive like hell, lather, rinse, repeat was plenty. Any more than that and I started to think maybe the Nazis could just have France, if they wanted it so bad. Edge gave the PS3 version 5 out of 10 and called it an awesome display of cliches, stereotypes, shortcuts and failures in logic. <laughs>